The Pepsodent Show, starring Bob Hope. We're not one for bragging, but if your party's lagging, just remember where there's life you'll find Bob Hope. Thank you so much. How do you do, ladies and gentlemen? This is Bob, way out West Hope, who says if you want to be a Western pal to your gal... Just say, listen, Sal, use Pepsodent, and you won't have empty molars in the old corral. <laughs> or, <clears throat> this is Bob Income Tax Hope telling you we're paying more taxes and using more Pepsodent this year so we can be armed to the teeth. <laughs> yes, sir, I've been busy all week trying to fill out my income tax. Blank. <laughs> This is, the, uh, this is the time of the year we all try hard to make deductions on our income tax. It's like trying to tilt a pinball machine with Morgenthau sitting on the end of it. <laughs> I sent Henry Morgenthau a big tube of Pepsodent so I can clean him while he's cleaning me. <laughs> no, really, I went down and paid my tax the other day without a single complaint, without a whimper. And in two more days, the Novocaine should all wear off. <laughs> and I happened to mention to the income tax clerk that I was working for Pepsodent. Clerk says, we have a little radio program of our own. It's called Truth or Consequences. <laughs> but when it comes to income tax, I'm lucky I'm living in California. Where else could I take off $5,000 for umbrellas? <laughs> I shouldn't say that because the weather is beautiful now. We're now having the kind of weather we weren't having when we said we had it. <laughs> but, weren't we? But the sun, but the sun has been shining beautifully for a whole week now, and I've got a wonderful tan on my face. That is the part above the water line. <laughs> The sun finally came out. A Democrat took his first look at the sun, smiled, and said, I knew Roosevelt would come through. <laughs> but, really, but really, it's amazing what happened on Sunset Boulevard. When the water finally went down, they found two taxis, three buses, and an octopus who'd taken a wrong turn at Redonda Beach. <laughs> At least the rain fills the yard with beautiful flowers. This is the only part of the country where you can pick water lilies and sit on the roof at the same time. <laughs> and, the, uh, and, the, and the fruit packers out here have a new idea this year. The oranges are all stamped, grown in California in spite of everything. <laughs> But regardless of the weather, they always dress the same here. Back east, everybody bundles up in the cold weather. Out here, when you see a guy with an overcoat on, it means he hasn't been to Santa Anita. <laughs> <laughs> and it's wonderful the way you can pick oranges right off the trees out here. They told me at the hospital as they removed the buckshot. <laughs> but, but gee, the way things grow out here in California, why, only last week I planted a little bit of a tree. And already it's dead. <laughs> I want to tell you, and, and everything in California grows so fast. In fact, every time the stork delivers a baby, he throws in a package of blue blades. For, I'll be back. But... <laughs> every time the stork delivers a baby, he throws in a package of blue blades free. <laughs> Should have gone to the third grade. They told me it was swell there. But this, uh... <laughs> but I want to tell you, this is beautiful country out here, and what a view from Hollywood Boulevard. <laughs> I'm doing great tonight, huh? I got a nice throat too. I wish my agent had ten percent of it. That's all. <laughs> But what a beautiful view from Hollywood Boulevard. <laughs> Go ahead, talk to each other while we rehearse, will you? I'll start over. This is beautiful country out here, and what a view from Hollywood Boulevard. Where else can you stand in the street, look up, and see snow-covered mountains and have your pocket picked at the same time? 
Thank you. I'm glad it's over, too. <laughs> Mr. Hope. Yes? Mr. Hope, I represent the Rainy Day Savings Association. Yeah, what do you do? Save them up and send them to Florida? <laughs> oh, no, no. You misunderstand, Mr. Hope. This is about money. Have you enough money put away for a big rain? No, but I've got quite a bit. I've got quite a bit. <laughs> I say, have you enough money put Just away for a... Just read your lines. I'm lousy. <laughs> Mr. Hope, I'm simply asking a very, a very, uh, question. Uh, <laughs> oh, uh, you think I was wearing my galoshes over my mouth, wouldn't you? I would like to talk about money, Mr. Hope. <laughs> if you feel anything, I'd cut in anywhere. It's all right. Have you enough money... Put away for a big rain No, but I've got quite a bit put away for a drip And I do mean me <laughs> Surely, Mr. Hope, you must have heard about that old saying Take care of the pennies and the dollars will take care of themselves That's the way to make both ends meet mm, I knew there must be an easier way than the way they do it on a massaging table <laughs> Well <laughs> I can see I'm not getting any place with you Well, how about you, Mr. Baker? Do you know a good thing when you hear about it? Say, I should say I do, brother that's why I've been so hepped up on Pepsi and antiseptic. You see, you can save real cash when you use it because it lasts three times as long and makes your money go three times as far. Now, here's the reason for that. Pepsi and antiseptic, even when diluted with two parts of water, kills germs in seconds. And even after the dilution, it's a more effective germ killer than many mouth antiseptics used full strength. A United States government ruling provides that when the word antiseptic is used on the label, the product must kill germs. Standard laboratory tests are used to prove the germ-killing properties of all antiseptics. Now, many antiseptics do no more than just pass those tests. But Pepsodent does more, lots more. It passes these rigid tests even after it's diluted with water. So there you are, ladies and gentlemen. You can have the protection of Pepsodent antiseptic. And at the same time, save money because it lasts three times as long. For these raw, changeable days, it's a good idea to have Pepsi and antiseptic in your home. Use it as a gargle frequently. All you have to do to have this protection is phone your druggist and order a bottle of Pepsi and antiseptic, the kind that lasts three times as long. <laughs> With a twist of the wrist, with your lips that insist, with that come here the look in your eye. Just when I think we through, you do magic and make me love you. At the drop of a hat, it's as easy as that, with the marriage the tempted aside. When I'm sure you're untrue, you do magic and make me love you. Yes, I'm just, after all, at your beck and your call. Seems we'll never be for you and me all. Over. With a twist of the wrist, I'd be back on your list. It doesn't matter how hard I may try. How can I get away from your very persuasive allure? With a twist of the wrist, I'm yours. Your beck and your call Seems it will never be For you and me All over With a twist of the wrist I'll be back on your list Doesn't matter how hard I may try How can I get away From your very persuasive allure With a twist of the wrist I'm you yours You ought to know I mean it That's it, baby I'm yours Yeah. 
That was Skinny Ennis and the Six Hits and the Miss singing Twist of the Wrist from the sensational New York production Crazy with the Heat. Say, Bill Goodman. Oh, hello, Bob. You know, Bob, it's kind of tough getting back to work after all the fun we had over there at Catalina Island. Oh, it sure is, Bill. When we got there, did you see those pretty girls in short bathing suits standing with the ocean in back of them? Oh, was that the ocean in back of them? Uh-huh. <laughs> Gee, what a place that Catalina is. And those girls over there are so young and fresh, you know, just like little buds. Yeah, I saw you trying to collect a corsage. <laughs> Say, how big was that bathing suit your girl was wearing? Well, my girl's was even smaller. <laughs> you know, Bob, if girls' bathing suits get any smaller, they'll have to go in the water. <laughs> I thought it was darn nice of you, though, to take your girl on that swell boat trip to Catalina. Oh, it was nothing. Gee, she rows well, doesn't she? <laughs> she could have done better with oars. <laughs> Say... Say, you disappeared that first night, Bill. Yes, I did, Bob. I wanted to be alone, so I just sat in front of the window in the dark for hours, just staring out. Gee, could you see her from your place, too? (laughs) Uh, I spent the next afternoon lying in the warm sun. Did you see me out there? Yes, I saw you, all right. Was that a bathing suit or a bet you had on? (laughs) Why, it was a bathing suit. Did you think the sleeves were too long? Well, yes, I did, Bob. It'd be nicer if you let your fingers show a little. Gee, what an old-fashioned suit. Why, Goodman, I thought my bathing suit looked very modern since I had the skirt shortened. (laughs) I think it looks better above the knees. Say, Bob, did you see Skinny Ennis in his bathing suit? He's thinner than I thought. Yeah, he's the only man I ever saw swim out of his bathing suit without touching the sides. (laughs) Skinny Ennis made a big mistake, you know. He walked out on the shore and opened a big beach umbrella. It was too bad it was such a windy day. Yeah. Yeah, but I hear he made a wonderful landing at the Union Airport. (laughs) Say, by the way, did you see me swim underwater, Bob? Yeah, you were good at swimming underwater. Where'd you learn to grab your nose and hold it so long? I've been on this program three years, and he asked me a question like that. (laughs) Uh... (laughs) Say, but I'm glad we went over to Catalina. Those little trips really helped me. I wonder where I should go next. I say, I wonder where I should go next. No coaching from the audience, please. (laughs) Say, Rob, did you see the Chicago Cubs training over there? Sure, Bill. That wasn't a very high fence. I even... (laughs) I even brought one of the Cubs back with me. Ladies and gentlemen, as a special treat, it is my pleasure to present one of baseball's outstanding pitchers and personalities at present in training with the Chicago Cubs at Catalina Island, Dizzy Dean. Thanks, Bob. Well, how are you, Dizzy? Fine, but don't call me Dizzy. Why? I thought everybody called you Dizzy. They do, but somehow in this program, I resent it. (laughs) You see, it's only my bullpen name. Well, if it isn't Dizzy Dean, what is your right name? You know, the name on your bank account, on the checks you sign. Oh, that's Mrs. Dizzy Dean. (laughs) Dizzy... You actually mean she wears the baseball pants in your family? Yeah, and on her in this town, they'd look good. <laughs> Say, you're, you're playing with the Chicago Cubs, aren't you? You know, Dizzy, I was just thinking, you you with Mr. Wrigley and me with Pepsi, we're both living off gums, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, does Mr. Wrigley make you work during the off-season? Does he? Bob, you know those three little green men that dance around advertising his gum? Why, yes. Well, this winter, there were four of us. <laughs> Say, Bob, you seem to enjoy it when you were over watching our spring training. You ought to come over and visit me on, again on the island. Maybe next Friday. I can't, Dizzy. That's the day I visit my brother on his island. <laughs> By the way, do you know my brother? Daffy? What do you do? Use your own punctuation? <laughs> Listen. Listen, when I see a coma, I emphasize it. What's that? When I see a coma, I emphasize it. <laughs> coma? I don't like to get personal. Did you ever room with Maxie Rosenblum? <laughs> 
only when I went to Harvard. <laughs> Let's get back to the dull stuff. Say, Dizzy, I was sorry to hear you had a little trouble with your arm. What was the matter? Well, my doctor thought it might be a bad tooth. He wanted to pull it, but uh, forced me, a friend of mine had told about Pep's Dent Toothpaste. Yes, yes, go on. Boy, on this program, you have to sweat for your money. <laughs> Listen to this. I know a lot about baseball myself. When I was a kid, I used to pitch for the Eagle Knob Skunks. Remember that time? Remember that time I met you? I was with the Skunks then, and you helped me quite a bit. Shucks, Bob. That was nothing. Anybody could have told you about Lady Esther. <laughs> well, when I played ball in those days, I used to have trouble with my batting. I'd always swing and miss. Didn't you ever connect? Yeah, one day I hit a long drive to the outfield. I slid in the first... Then I slid in the second, then I slid in the third, then I slid in the second. What'd you go back to second for? My pants. <laughs> I got to be a pretty good batter, though. One thing those pitchers couldn't do was scare me away from the plate. I remember one fellow threw a ball straight at my head. What happened, Bob? I heard a rhapsody. <laughs> Say, Dizzy, while you're here in Hollywood, is there anything I can do for you? There sure is, Bob. I'd really like to meet Hedy Lamar. Hedy Lamar, huh? Well, take a train to Kansas City, Diz. The line starts there. I've been, I've been meaning to ask you, Bob, what's all this I hear about Hollywood wolves? Oh, that's just a guy that likes to walk down Hollywood Boulevard and look at all the pretty girls and wants to talk to them and get to know them. Oh, uh, well, I'll be darned. I'm a wolf. <laughs> you know, Diz, you'd be pretty popular with the girls if you were as big and strong as I am. Are you kidding? <laughs> Wait a minute, Dizzy. I think I'm as strong as you are. Let's shake hands and see who has the strongest grip. All right. Put your hand in mine. Now squeeze. <laughs> now will you put it in my pocket for me? <laughs> Thank you, Dizzy Dean. And Dizzy will be back with us in a few minutes, folks. And now, a funny little story about a funny little fellow whose name was Alexander. The six hits and a miss, Pauline, Professor Colonna, Bill Goodman, Brandon Kavina, and Skinny Ennis' orchestra will help me tell you about Alexander the Swoosh. Here comes little Alexander, what a funny-looking gander. He's half swan and he's half goose. Ha, 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 he's just a swoosh. Oh, mother, mother, mother goose, why am I not like brother goose? The other geese just laugh at me and call me a catastrophe. Swoosh, swoosh, Alexander is a swoosh. They play hide and seek I hide my head Cause I'm a freak The same my pappy Was a swan A good for nothing Vagabond Swoosh, swoosh Alexander is a swoosh Swoosh Alexander is a swoosh Big feet Big feet Alexander is a freak They're so unkind But I don't mind their slander I'm just disturbed because I heard they're gonna cook my goosey gander. Guess you'll have to run away. We know what they'll do if you stay. I'd rather be a refugee instead of chicken fricassee. <laughs> If my father were a gopher and my mother had been a raccoon. Now, let me see. I could be a half gopher and half raccoon. Gosh, that makes me a goon. Check. Goose, goose, Alec is a half a goose. Goose, goose, Alec is a half a goose. Suppose my mother was a badger and suppose my father was a stag. I'll run that down. That's half badger and half stag. Oh, sister, that makes you say you're lonesome, aren't you? They're unkind, you need not mind their slander. You don't need to be disturbed. They're gonna cook your goosey gondo. Loud, so supposing my mother was a dragon and let's say my father was a skunk. You have that, bud. That's half dragon and half skunk? You dig me. Oh, brother, you, you ain't sober, are you, huh? Smooth, smooth, Alexander is a smooth, 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 Alexander is a smooth. 
Now, on my father's side, I'm a jaybird, and they say my mother was a turkey. I died very young. Oh, no kidding. Half jaybird and half turkey? Well, that doesn't make me very perky, does it? <laughs> That's our lesson for today. Teacher, can't we go and play? Yeah, but look, what's half swan and half a goose? We don't know. Oh, what's the use? <laughs> what are you laughing at, Kelowna? Alexander is a, a Alexander is a Oh, you can really empty a studio, that Jerry. That was the entire mob and Jim the cop, ladies and gentlemen. Say, Bob, who's that girl over there at the piano? What's she doing all alone? She looks like she hasn't got a friend in the world. Oh, gosh, I feel sorry for her. As a matter of fact, she hasn't got many friends. A swell kid like that, too. I met her for the first time at Helen's about a month ago. Well, what's the payoff? Well, we were telling all about our lives. Heart-to-heart -heart stuff, you know. Would have been okay over the telephone, but... Not face to face. That's oh, a darn shame. Yes, it is a shame that anyone needs suffer from this kind of a whispering campaign, especially when it's usually so easy to avoid. There's no trick at all in keeping your breath sweet and pure. Why, in just a few seconds, Pepsodent Antiseptic makes your mouth feel refreshed and your breath fresh and clean. Here's all you have to do. Before you go out where you'll meet people, gargle with Pepsodent Antiseptic for a few seconds. It gives three times as much safe breath protection because even when it's diluted with two parts of water, it's still an effective antiseptic. And you can see what this means in money saving. Because it lasts three times as long, it makes your money go three times as far. Now, don't run the risk of offending when it's so easy to guard against it. Just keep a bottle of Pepsodent Antiseptic handy as your breath insurance. Get a bottle tonight at any drug counter. <laughs> Much longer must I wait, Dizzy. Tell me. Well, folks, here we are in the ninth inning of this great baseball game. Bob's Hope team is out there in the field. There's the hit. It's a high fly ball. Hope himself is out in the field. He's going to try to get it. He's circling under it now. It's coming down. <laughs> is there a doctor in the house? <laughs> well, Bob Hope is forfeiting the game. He's going back to the locker room to see if he can sign up some better players for his ball club. We take you now to the locker room where Bob is trying to sign his star holdout. Would you like to pitch in tomorrow, Dizzy? Sure, Chief. Think you can win? Sure, Chief. Know what'll happen if you don't win? Sure, Super Chief. <laughs> <laughs> well, then, we're ready to draw up your contract, Dizzy. Here's my lawyers, Blitz, Fitz, Mitz, and Barney Dean. How did Barney Dean get in there? He owns a fountain pen. <laughs> Now, Dizzy, if you'll just sign this. Now, wait a minute. I won't sign this baseball contract, Hope. I don't like it. Why, there's nothing wrong with that contract. I copied it right from the one Paramount gave me. <laughs> That's what I don't like about it. Why should I have to carry out the garbage? <laughs> I don't carry out the garbage at Paramount. My nose turns up like this naturally. <laughs> I don't know whether I like this contract or not. Where's the part where it says how much money I get? Right there, right there in the white print. Now, come on. <laughs> now, come on, Dizzy, sign up. And remember, you'll have to abide by our training rules. You can't go out with girls, understand? Listen here. If I want to go out with a girl, I'll go out with a girl, see? Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Has she got a friend? <laughs> Never mind. Never mind, I ain't gonna sign. Listen, Diz, you better sign with me because right now my assistant is in New York trying to sign up one of the greatest baseball players of all time, Babe Ruth. Hello? Great news. This is your assistant, Colonna, and I'm in New York talking with the Babe. She said no. <laughs> <laughs> Professor, you're supposed to be signing up a baseball player. Well, I have. I've just signed up a trained bear to play second base. A bear? Colonna, that's dangerous. Not since this bear is trained And I've got him eating out of my hand In fact, I'm going to feed him a little piece of candy now And he'll eat it right out of my hand Here, nice bear, eat this piece of candy 
Yes, boss, I've got him eating right out of my shoulder. <laughs> Colota, how do you always get into foolish predicaments? I got a season pass. <laughs> Well, you know, Diz, I don't really don't need you. I'm negotiating with another great picture. Picture, do you ever hear? Do you ever hear about Skinny Ennis? Sure, I know all about Skinny Ennis. Isn't it a shame? <laughs> I'll get it, Diz. Hello, Hope's Pepsi and Polecats. Our catcher's sly, our pitcher's mysterious, and we expect to win the World Series. <laughs> He's delirious. <laughs> Listen, Hope, great news. I just found a baseball pitcher who can pitch a curve, a spitball, a drop, and a fastball all at the same time. Professor, in order to do that, a player would have to have four arms. That's impossible. You hear that, Joe? Is it impossible? Well, stop shaking one head yes or the other one no. <laughs> <laughs> Professor, you signed up a baseball player who has two heads and four arms? Yes, two arms face one way and two arms face the other way. It's wonderful. What's so wonderful about it? He could scratch himself any place. <laughs> Kelowna, you irk me. No, you irk me. You're a bigger irk. <laughs> Say this. Look out the window. Here come the pitcher and catcher Kelowna signed up for me yesterday. Let's listen to what they're saying. Brenda, what is it, Copina? <laughs> Isn't it swell us being baseball players? Yeah, but you take the game too seriously. What an argument you gave that umpire because you didn't like his decision. Oh, I didn't mind his decision, but I got awful sore when he dusted home plate with my hair. <laughs> yeah, at least he should have taken it off your head first. <laughs> Corbina, do you really like being a baseball player? Sure. Oh, I haven't had so much fun since I was in Seattle during the blackout. <laughs> Oh, gosh, baseball players are so romantic. Yeah. I was out with a baseball player once. He was with the Yankees. With the Yankees? Where'd you meet him, walking through Central Park? No, marching through Georgia. <laughs> Say, you went out with a baseball player from the house of David, didn't you? Yeah. He had a great big bushy beard all over his face. Did you nick with him? Yeah. It's the first time I ever kissed a guy and had two helpings of shredded wheat. <laughs> You know, every time I wanted to kiss him, every time I wanted to kiss him, he'd cry so hard, tears rolled into his beard. Well, what did you do when you wanted him to kiss you? Oh, I'd just say, shoot the shrubbery to me, blubbery. <laughs> oh, come on. Uh, here's Bobsy's office. Let's go in. Hello, hello Bobsy. Bobsy. Oh, hello, girls. And when I call you that, I'm spreading propaganda. <laughs> hey, what is this? Oh, Dizzy, let me introduce you formally. These are Brenda and Cabina. Hello. Nice to meet all the DiMaggio boys. <laughs> Hey, Dizzy, uh, just put your arms around my neck and show me how to play baseball. Come on, put your arms around my neck. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute, that's not baseball. Every game I try to play, some wise guy's got an umpire. <laughs> oh, now get out of here. I've got to talk to Diz. Say, Diz, now that I see what kind of baseball players Kelowna sent me, there's nothing I can do but hire you at whatever salary you want. It's my only chance. Well, Bob, I'll sign, but only if you give me a salary of $50,000. And 10% at the gate on weekdays and 15% on Sundays. Okay. Gosh, Bumsy, how are you going to figure that out? Oh, don't worry, Cabina. I've got this automatic adding, subtracting, and multiplying machine here. It'll add up those figures in the jiffy, and I'll finally have Dizzy signed. Here goes. I press the button on the adding machine. <laughs> Anybody got a pencil? <laughs> Good night, ladies and gentlemen. Next week, we're going to have a big show because we're going to have the groaner, old Bing, back here. And we're really going to do a little road of some kind. I don't know. But Bing Crosby will be here next week and the regular gang. Good night. Don't forget next week, ladies and gentlemen, Bing Crosby and Bob Hall. This is Bill Goodwin saying goodnight for President. This is the National Broadcasting Company.